The movie begins in the car of a middle-aged, sad-looking man at an airport. In his hand is a bottle of alcohol. After taking a cup of his strong drink, he freshens his breath and quickly steps out of his SUV. Soon he is joined by a passenger who tells him that he is bound for Amsterdam. The passenger asks Bill for a lighter for his cigarette and tries to engage Bill in a conversation. However, Bill is in no mood for chit-chat as he watches a happy couple before him. Later on, Bill goes to the restroom where he is joined by Hammond, an air marshal. It turns out that Bill is also an air marshal scheduled to travel with a plane later that night. After leaving the washroom, Bill studies the different passengers expected to travel that night and soon notices that a little girl, Becca, is traveling alone. When parents with kids are asked to get on board, Becca is hesitant since no one is with her, but Bill soon joins her and helps her to board. After settling in, a young woman, Jen Summers, asks the passenger sitting beside Bill to swap his window seat with hers as she really wants to have a window seat. The passenger, Zack White is not exactly excited about this, but in the end, he agrees to give up his seat. Soon, the plane takes off, and after a bumpy start, Jen notices Bill's unease and tries to assuage his fears. He then asks about her job, but she finds some reason not to tell him what she does and asks to rest for the night flight. With the plane in the air, Bill sends out a text message to his superiors to inform them that there are no problems on board. Then he gets up to go to the washroom where he smokes a cigarette. When he returns to his seat, he receives a cryptic message from a passenger who knows that he is an air marshal. Bill is stunned as his identity is supposed to be a secret. However, the stranger is not done with his games. The next text reveals that he knows that Bill has been smoking in the restroom, an act that constitutes a federal offense. Whoa, looks like someone is a simp here. Bill quickly looks around to see if he can spot the person behind the weird text messages, but no one in his section of the plane seems to be responsible for the messages. He gets up from his seat and walks to the next section of the plane, and Jen, who had been pretending to be asleep, opens her eyes. While he is here in the next section of the plane, the stranger sends him more cryptic and fearful text messages. He demands $150 million within 20 minutes, and sends him the account for the transfer to be made into. He also states that if that is not done in the given time, he will take the life of one of the passengers on board. Bill no longer thinks this is funny, and soon calls Hammond, who he believes is behind these weird text messages. Hammond denies sending the messages, and after confirming that this is true, Bill is now certain that there is a dangerous passenger with them on the plane. He asks that they make an emergency landing as per standard protocol, but Hammond believes that is not necessary. The person behind the messages might just be trying to pull a stunt for all they know. However, Bill is not willing to take any chances, and so he goes to inform the pilots about the new development. One of the pilots informs him that they are currently over the ocean, and so this rules out the possibility of an emergency landing. Bill soon requests for access to the CCTV footage on board, and asks Nancy, a flight attendant, and Jen to help him look through the footage. He asks them to mark out passengers who are on their phones for extended periods of time. Soon enough, Jen notices Hammond's continuous use of his phone and informs Bill about this. But he ignores this and tells her that Hammond is not the person they are looking for. The text messages resume. This time, the evil passenger asks Bill about his little daughter. It turns out that this is a message that strikes below the belt as Bill lost his little girl to cancer a while ago. This is part of the reason why he began to drink. With this personal information about his family sent to him, Bill is now certain that whoever is behind the text messages really knows about him. No one else on that plane should have that kind of information except, of course, Hammond. He looks for his colleague who is now making his way to the restroom. Bill hurriedly goes after him and accosts him. He confesses that he needs the money and offers to give Bill some part of it. However, an upset Bill is in no mood for bribes and tries to take Hammond's phone from him. He refuses and attacks Bill. As the phone drops into a wash hand basin, he turns on the water to destroy the phone. After some scuffling, he takes out his gun to shoot Bill, but he is soon overpowered and loses his life in the process. Bill steps out of the washroom with the phone and locks it to prevent anyone else from using it. With the terrible ordeal behind him, 
He gets ready to resume his flight, but then something eerie happens. He receives a new text message that pretty much thanks him for killing a passenger in the 20th minute. He then asks him to reset his time for another 20 minutes countdown. Puzzled and confused, Bill makes his way to the cockpit where one of the pilots informs him that the owner of the account sent to him by the hijacker has been found. Shockingly, the owner is none other than Bill himself. As a result, Bill is asked to surrender his gun and badge to the pilot. Jen, who had been eavesdropping on the conversation between Bill and the pilot, helps him to fix Hammond's phone. And when it is powered on, he finds out that Hammond had also been speaking with the hijacker. In one of the text messages, the mysterious person said he knows about the content of Hammond's box. Bill goes to get Hammond's box and takes it to the restroom to open it. He finds a huge parcel of hard drugs in it. This explains what Hammond meant when he said he needed the money. He was smuggling hard drugs in exchange for money, and so he was not referring to the $150 million the hijacker had demanded as ransom. With time running out, Bill is forced to use Hammond's badge to search the passengers in his bid to track down the hijacker. After searching out a few people, including a Muslim, Dr. Fahim, Charles, a lawyer, and Riley, who introduces himself as a cop, he comes across Tom, the passenger who said he was on his way to Amsterdam earlier on. His presence on the plane is suspicious, as the plane is not headed for Amsterdam. Bill grabs him, and Tom is forced to tell him that someone paid him to find out where Bill was headed. Bill drags him around the plane, asking him to show him who paid him, but he cannot find the person. He looks at his stopwatch and discovers that in seconds, the next person on the plane will lose his or her life. Someone on the plane presses a button that causes it to depressurize, throwing everyone who is not strapped to their seats around. After the plane resumes normalcy, the time for the second person to die is up, and Bill discovers that it is not just a passenger, but one of the pilots. Although Kyle, his co-pilot, and Fahim try their best to revive him, it is no use as he passes on. With this second demise, Bill resets his stopwatch again. He realizes that the hijacker will strike once more after 20 minutes. Later on, Jen tells him that Zack is a programmer, and with his skill set, he just might be able to track down the hijacker's phone. Zack affirms that this is possible, so he sends a malware of some sort through Bill's phone to all the phones on board. The malware will take the phone off its silence mode and cause it to ring. Bill then moves all of the passengers to a single section amidst their complaints and shuts down the business class when this is done. He asks everyone to raise their hands and carefully walks through the plane awaiting the culprit's phone to ring. Charles's phone rings and Bill wastes no time in grabbing the scared man. He interrogates him harshly, but poor Charles insists that he knows nothing about the hostage situation. He also states that the ringing phone doesn't belong to him. Suddenly, just like the pilot, he begins to convulse and moments later he dies. Fahim, who goes to check on the dying lawyer, emerges, wearing a forlorn look and eventually reveals the demise of the pilot and Charles. Riley then instigates the passengers to overpower and capture Bill as soon as possible. Meanwhile, an exasperated Bill goes to the restroom for a cigarette, and as he puffs away, something catches his attention. He discovers the smoke from his cigarette making its way into the cockpit. Upon further investigation, he discovers a tiny pipe that may have been used to poison the pilot and Charles. He goes to Jen after finding out she used the restroom and demands to know why she sat by him. After some questioning, she reveals that she has a heart condition and only wanted to have a nice view as her condition is terminal. With the phone of the hijacker now in his hand, Bill tries to unlock the passworded phone. Unfortunately, this turns out to be a terrible idea as he activates the countdown to a bomb hidden on the plane. After some brainstorming, Bill discovers that the bomb can only be in Hammond's box since all Air Marshal's items are not checked before boarding. He hurries to open the box and beneath the hard drugs finds an explosive with a timer counting down. Unfortunately, news about Bill being identified as the hijacker is across all media houses. This is because the account sent to him really belongs to him. When he comes out of the washroom where Hammond's box has been, the passengers attack him, dragging him to the ground. After a while of struggling, Tom comes to his rescue by pointing a gun at the attackers and asking them to let him go. Bill then tells them about the bomb, and they discover that this is true. 
With time running out, Bill takes the bomb to the end of the plane and plants it there. He then asks that the passengers use the luggage as barricades to mitigate the effect of the explosion. While this is going on, the ransom is paid to Bill's account, and from all indications, especially to his superiors who are not on the plane, he is behind the act of terror on the plane. This is further complicated by a viral video of him dragging Tom around earlier. Bill sees the passenger that uploaded the video and takes the phone from him. He sees a number of videos on the phone, but one catches his attention. In the course of dragging Tom, he notices him stumbling over Charles and slipping his phone into his pocket. Tom realizes that he has been exposed and quickly grabs Riley, pointing a gun at him. He attempts to shoot him, but the gun is empty. Riley knocks him down and hurries off to get some ammunition for the gun. However, Zack has the bullets with him, and when Riley reaches for them, Zack attacks him. He soon reloads the gun and shoots Riley. In this moment of a shocking discovery, Tom recovers and attacks a distracted Bill, taking his gun from him. With the real hijackers now exposed, they take full control of the plane. After revealing the sinister purpose for attacking the plane, which Tom refers to as the failure of the security architecture of their country, Zack reveals their plans to jump off the plane the moment it descends to a certain height. However, Tom is a crazed fellow and prefers to go down as a martyr. It turns out that Tom and Zack are ex-military men who are disillusioned with the wars of their country against others. Bill persuades Zack to save himself and deactivate the bomb. He agrees and begins to walk off to do so, but Tom shoots him. At this point, the pilot who is being escorted by two fighter jets on both sides of the plane suddenly plunges the plane downward against the orders of the two fighter jet pilots. This throws off Tom while Bill seizes the opportunity to grab a gun. With a single shot, he sends a bullet through Tom's head. Zack, who is still alive, also meets his Waterloo when he tries to get the last parachute to jump off. Bill overpowers him and leaves him at the rear of the plane with the explosive and time running out. The explosion detonates and blows off Zack. After struggling with a lost engine, the pilot finally lands the plane at the runaway close by, thus saving the lives of the remaining passengers, including little Becca, who was also sucked out of the plane. As the movie ends, Jen and Bill are seen together. For someone with a heart condition, she seems interested in allowing her heart to roam for as long as it is alive. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this recap, be sure to let us know in the comment section which movie you will want us to recap for you. Also, make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you do not miss our next video.